I'm Paul Eddy from Paul Eddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Now today I'm giving the chuck steaks another try. My first attempt where I cooked them at 135 degrees Fahrenheit in the sous vide for 12 hours and then I finished them searing in a cast iron skillet, but they were pretty tough. So I've got to give it another shot. A while back I found a prime chuck roast on sale, so I decided to cut it up into steaks. And like I said, prime's got great flavor, but this chuck boy was far too tough. So I needed another approach. Now on my second pair of the steaks that I cooked from this, I decided I was gonna make some burn ends out of them because I knew I could tender that up. And I smoked those steaks to 185 degrees Fahrenheit and then I cubed them up before you go on to the next step. But while they were cubed, I had to give them a taste and man, they tasted great. But they were still a bit too tough. I came up with a plan to sous vide the steaks to 202 degrees Fahrenheit. That way it would guarantee that they would be tender and then I would finish them up on the smoker. So that's my plan for today and we're gonna find out together how this turns out because I've never actually done this before. Okay, step one, we're gonna make up our 211 rub. This is two parts black pepper, one part kosher salt, and one part Lowry seasoned salt. Now it really doesn't matter what unit of measurement that you use, just keep it in the ratio that's 2-1-1. And for the record, I'm using a 1 8 cup as my measurement. Really, the only thing you need to remember about this rub is to keep it mixed up by constantly shaking it. And maybe not make a large batch because as it's used, your ratio can change. So as a general rule, smaller batches may be better because you make it up today, it's okay for this particular batch, but if you got something left over, you go to use it next time, you might not really have the same ratio. All right, we want to season these steaks on both sides. In here, I've just kind of used a moderate amount. Okay, now this part we're doing now, it really should have been done before I seasoned them, but I'm gonna play the old card. Because I'm old, I nearly forgot. I'm using a jacquard, or it's really a jacquard knockoff to tenderize the steaks. Now it's got a bunch of rows of tiny little knife blades and so it cuts up to 48 tiny holes and that helps tenderize the steak. So better late than never. But one side is probably enough when you're doing this, but I usually do it on both sides. I can't help myself. Using that jacquard's a lot of fun. Okay, now we got them ready to vacuum seal and I'm using my Magic Seal Vacuum Sealer. This is a great little vacuum sealer, and if you're interested, I'll leave a link down below. It's a little bit kind of on the pricey side, but these things are built to last. When they're all sealed up, I'm going to put them in the sous vide. We're going two hours and 15 minutes at 202 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, like I've already talked about from my previous experience, I knew that 185, that wasn't going to get it done. So not taking any chances, that's how I decided on 202 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you're rocking along in the sous vide and it's about 10 to 15 minutes before our time is up. They've been in there a little over two hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the Yoder YS1500 pellet smoker. The target temperature is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I've kind of covered this on previous videos about the minimum temperature on the Yoder YS1500. It is actually 175 degrees from the manufacturer, but we can trick it, especially this model, maybe other models too, maybe other brands, I don't know, but you change the calibration setting. We're gonna add plus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Go into the menu, settings, find the calibration, and then add plus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget to save your work. The controller will still only show 175 degrees minimum on the set point, but you just tricked it into thinking that it's 25 degrees hotter than it actually is. This particular smoker's got two tail truth thermometers, and those thermometers will definitely sync up at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And why 150? Well, 150 is gonna produce more smoke than 175. And a lot of pellet smokers, almost all pellet smokers, they're kind of challenged to produce enough of that smoky flavor. So we got a better shot at getting it at the lower temperatures. 
And one more thing we can do is we don't have to wait for it to actually warm up. We want to take advantage of all that smoke that is producing at startup, and especially on a pellet smoker, because like I say, they are challenged to get your smoke requirements in anyway. Don't be afraid that it'll mess up your cook with some dirty smoke. It should be able to take it. You open those bags, remove the steaks, you want to dry them off a bit, and as you can see, they did release a whole lot of liquid, so try not to rub off too much of the seasoning. Now we want to hit them with a light coating of beef bouillon, and I'm using Norse beef bouillon. This also contains a lot of salt, so keep that in mind when you're using it, don't get carried away. And I'm putting these on the smoker on the top rack in about the middle. You may not have a top rack. You may not be able to cook on your top rack. Go ahead and use your bottom rack. But on this smoker, the top rack works fine. And since these steaks are completely cooked, we don't have to worry about monitoring that internal temperature. Now, some people recommend that you cool the steaks off in a cold water bath before you open up the bags. But today, I'm not doing that part. My plan is to cook them at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours, then flip them over after the first hour. Okay, plans can change, so look at these. We've gone one hour, and they look fine. They look like they're finished. It's enough for me, so I'm calling it good. These are coming out. Let's just give them a little courtesy rest. Let them rest 10, 15 minutes. Oh yeah, they cut up very, very easy. It's not quite like a traditional steak. Definitely not like brisket. Now you want this, you need this, and you're gonna love this too. Okay, this of course is very, very tender and it's got a great taste. So I believe that all that liquid that was produced when we had it in the sous vide, I think it did wash off a lot of that seasoning and it could use a little more seasoning for my taste. And of course, when I do this next time, and I will, I will add the seasoning after the sous vide process, not before. Now, another way to do steaks, if you're using a combination of smoking and sous vide, of course, would be to smoke it first. But I really didn't like the idea of having the sous vide last, so I did it this way. And it might be because just everything that I've always sous vide, I've sous vide it first. But smoker first may be better because the smoker may seal in those juices and the meat might also take up a lot more smoke at the cooler temperatures. And if you only smoke for one hour like I did, it can limit the amount of smoke absorption. With all that said, I'm gonna say that this did a great job of finishing these steaks. So I'm gonna put this in the success column, but next time I will make those few changes that I talked about, like where I add that seasoning. Hey, be sure and hit me up in that comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are about this. Just let me know what you think. Now all you've got to do is hit that like button on your way out, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you next time at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue.